imagine one day your kids are not doing their homework. Instead, they start to fill in their shelves with science fiction, adventure stories, and so on. What would you do? Perhaps you would rather throw those books away immediately so that they could achieve better task force, higher class ranks, or go to a better college. At that moment, when you are taking away his favorite books, have you ever considered? Can they, your kids, make a judgment about what's helpful and what's a waste of time for them after they grow up? The late founder of Apple, Steve Jobs, once had an unusual study experience in Reed College. He enrolled in calligraphy for six weeks before dropping out of Reed College. As he said, he has never known this knowledge could ever be used in his whole life. Ten years later, he led his team design the new map. It is recognized as the most, as the computer with the most beautiful typography. Tsai Kung Yong is a famous Taiwan profession star. During an TV show, he told the audience that he felt very lucky that his parents never questioned the usefulness of his actions. Instead, they gave him the freedom to explore his interests. He learned from his grandparents to brew tea, cultivating plants, and play chess. Without these experiences, he could may not have become one of the most remarkable profession star at that time, in addition to being become an outstanding artist, novelist, movie director, and connoisseur. Back to my topic. What are authentically useful and what should be considered a waste of time? You may say practicing with piano is useful while playing with sand is useful. Reciting poetry is, is useful while reading fairy tales is useless. In short, the stereotype is that everything associated with better grades, higher class ranks, or better future schools are useful. All the others are not. According to research about educational backgrounds of CEOs from Fortune 500 companies by Harvard University several years ago, out of 500 CEOs, only 174 are MBAs. 59 have law degrees, and more than 200 of, of them do not have advanced degrees. And 19 of them even do not have a bachelor degree. Among those who attended college, only 3% graduated from Ivy League universities. Such result prove that a person's education doesn't necessarily guarantee his or her future success. How do schools stand out from others? During a break from a regular school day, students are challenged with chores like cleaning cow manures, doing woodworks, or producing iron containers. As one of the graduates from Honey School, Reed Hoffman, is the founder of LinkedIn Company. He summarized his four years of school life as a life lesson, which taught him the true meaning of life and inspired him to rethink how to build his own. Chinese artist Bai Hua Zong didn't attend any school, didn't do anything people then considered to be useful. In the sense that he didn't strive to become a doctor, a teacher, or a government official. He spent hours every day staring at clouds in the sky, of them the shapes and movements. His persistence and enthusiasm mark the beginning of his artistic career. Indeed, our modern education system has already become a fast-paced, competitive, and utilitarian-centric system. What we believe, our parents believe, is useful, is useful right now might be obsolete in the near future. However, what we missed 
could make a huge difference to our lives. Xiao Song Gao, a famous Chinese musician and TV analyst, once told his friends, I can't believe the novels I randomly read in my early life could mean so much to me today. So, to my peers, have faith in yourself. Follow the interest to where it takes you. To the parents, have faith in your children, since you will never know which part of their learning experience can be so vital in their success. Thank you.